Hello and welcome to the Plant-Based Fat Loss Solution Series. My name is Tanya Y. Pritchett and I am your host for this series. And today we have with, with us guest, Dr. Melissa Balizan. And um, hi, Dr. Melissa, how are you? I'm good, Tanya, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. So I just wanna introduce you really quickly and then I will turn it over to you to say more about yourself. Dr. Balizan um, has been in love with math and science for so many years, and that's where she ventured into the medical field. And for the first part of her career, she was in ambulatory and, institu and institutional care, and then has now moved into intertwining Eastern and Western medicine to be able to give you more choices. Her life work is about empowering you and letting you know that your health is a choice and how you improve your health is a choice. And she's helped over 15,000 plus patients take charge of their health by really optimizing their medication supplement and their total health care. So that is awesome, Dr. Balizan. I always say that it's important to have many people on your health team, your medical professionals, health coaches, uh, nutritionists, dietitians, everything to really have that holistic health. So why don't you explain and um, give us a little bit more about your background and how you really came to decide to intertwine the two. Sure. Um, so throughout my career, um, you know, I've always had a passion for helping people and, and finding that, um, finding that niche where what they were looking for. So I went in, um, thought I was going to go into research because I was actually on the path to find a cure for a rare condition my mom had been diagnosed with. And so that was my initial um, introduction. And I went in and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go into research. I'm going to find this cure. Well, I did the research. I decided not to go into research as you heard. I went more ambulatory and, and institutional. Um, but what I did do is early on, I was able to find going through pharmacy school and learning about medications and supplements. I was actually able to find her a supplement regimen that actually helped her condition. And so we talked to the hematologist and he was on board with it. And so that kind of start the path with looking at alternative methods and looking at alternatives is a great solution because not every medication is a right fit for everybody. Not every supplement is a right fit for everybody. And so that just opened my eyes to the possibilities of being able to utilize both that Eastern and Western and be able to see that the choice is always should always be yours, and that's and that's one of my passions is to empower um, women, especially to take charge of their health and understand that just because your physician says here's a prescription for X Y Z doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right choice for you at that time. Mm -hmm. So I like to keep that you know that in the in the forefront, and there's there's always alternatives, and we can go into into those more in just a little bit. No, well, thank you. Yes. And you know, I admire that you, were, you took that path to help your mom. I think a lot of people, especially in the health and wellness industry, really have come to this industry because of their experiences, either with themselves or with a parent. You know, my own journey was um, one wanting to stay away from so-called genetic conditions. And then two was really um, because I did have my own struggles with my own weight and everything and, and tried, you know, the things that the industry said to do and all those hacks and everything. And they may have worked for a time, but not long-term. And that's really what's, you know, important is really trying to, um, to have people have choices that are sustainable. And that's the whole theme of this series with the plant-based fat loss solution. It may not necessarily be um, the choice for you either, but it is something that can be sustainable if you choose to go that route. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the, the medications and the supplements, because I think a lot of people, especially when people who might be watching who are plant-based or vegan, um, that they really shy away from the thought of medications and supplements because they feel like they just want to get their whole health from a plant-based solution. So can you speak a little bit to that? Absolutely. So along my, along my journey, there's been multiple steps along that journey. And, um, you know, I think my mom kind of started me rolling on that path. And then there's been 
multiple other clients and patients and and then my own my own story as time went on and what i did is i started looking for for issues because i was um, very successful i was a hardworking woman like most of you who are watching are and what i did is i started feeling you know that that sluggishness and that 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 not feeling quite right and i was just trying to survive and i had this this issue where i actually couldn't breathe and i was like okay what's going on so what did i do like most i went to see the physician and they gave me they gave me a medication that didn't work. <laughs> um, and so I went to see a physician after physician. Finally, um, it wasn't, it, you know, I tried different medications. I'm, I'm in the healthcare field. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do what's, what's right. You know, yep, this still sounds right. And I started looking at some alternatives and that helped. And so that kind of pushed me in going into looking at those medications and supplements going, well, not every med is right for that particular person and not every supplement or Eastern practice is right for that person. So I was able to finally get to the right person to actually help me. Um, my case was severe enough that I needed to have surgery, but that still opened that door that I started looking and going, okay, everyone should have a choice in the matter of their medications and their supplements. And when we talk about plant-based, um, if we go back in time and we look, where do medications come from? Where do supplements come from? Most of them originate from plants, okay? Most of them originate somehow from plants. And some, yes, over time, they may have been derived into um, manufactured synthetically, but they're, they were initially mostly derived from those plants. And both medications and supplements have the ability to figure out, you know, which one is best for you. So if you go in and your doctor diagnoses you with diabetes, well, that's a condition that we know a lot about in the medical community, right? So we know lots of things about it. And we know that following a good lifestyle plan of a healthy nutrition plan and a healthy movement plan can help with that lessening of the diabetes, helping lower your blood sugar. And then you need to look at your medication and your medication may or may not be appropriate for you. There is, yes, there is supplements out there that can help you control your diabetes. So if you've been diagnosed with that particular thing or any other conditions, we could go into different ones, but knowing the impact of those, the medications and the supplements, which one is right for you may not be the gold standard of write the script from the physician and go get it filled. It may be more beneficial for you to follow more of a supplement regimen and good quality supplementation. Let me say that because that's very important. Just like when you're eating, you want to have good quality food that you're eating because that makes a difference in what you're putting into your body and how your body's digesting it and knowing which is the right for you you need, to, you need to start asking some questions. And that's where, you know, right, you're here and watching, you're listening, you're educating yourself and figuring out, okay, what is the right thing for me? And that's, and that's what we do is we want you to know what is the right choice for you and not to necessarily discount what your physician is doing, but realize that your physician may not have all the knowledge that they need to have about those supplements. And that's often why they shy away from them because they're, they don't want to, they don't want to tell you something they don't know. And so they know about, you know, they've learned about medications a little bit. They only get about one semester of medication training in school. So if you wow. do have a question, you want to go and ask that pharmacist if you can, because the pharmacists are the ones who are knowledgeable in their medications. And a lot of them are also knowledgeable in supplementation as well. Wow. And that's, that's a good place to pause because um, I didn't really realize that about the, the medicines, but that makes sense because you do have, you know, like you said, the pharmacists who have degrees in pharmacy to really know much more about each of the medications. Uh, I know that's true. I, I learned that was true regarding nutrition that a lot of the medical um, doctors don't, traditional medical doctors don't have a lot of education in tr nutrition. So that's another reason why it's important to seek out someone who is a nutritionist or dietitian or, you know, certified, like I'm certified in holistic and sports nutritionist um, 
to be able to add to your team. <laughs> and that's why I would say it's important to have a team of people because not one person can have all the answers. And it's funny because when you first were saying that when you had your condition and you um, it wasn't getting better, you did what most people do. You, and I thought you were going to say you went and sought Google. <laughs> Because that's what a lot of people do that, you know, they go to see Google before they get to their physician. So it's good that you um, sought after your physician, but that you ask questions and that you didn't just um, take an option without understanding what it was about. And, and I like that you empower people to do the same thing so that they can have those choices as well. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so regarding a, a, a plant-based diet, what suggestions would you have for people who, um, who are looking to, to go that route and maybe adding in some of the, the Western, um, the Eastern supplements and things into that plan? Absolutely. So when you're looking at a plant-based diet solution, and I like to, I actually like to leave that word out. So let's say plant-based lifestyle change or plant-based solution, because it, it actually starts there um, with your words and your mind shift, your mindset. And um, I advocate for whole body health and whole body health includes the mind, the body and the spirit, your emotional and your physical. So your, you know, your body. And when you're looking at the things that you're putting in nutrition wise, um, when you're looking at those plant-based solutions, when we think of things from the earth, those are typically things that are, yes, more healthier for you most of the time. And so those are things you need to look at getting good quality plant-based solutions, looking at quality of whatever you're taking, not necessarily quantity, but quality, and making sure that that quality of that plant-based is right for you. And, and that's the thing. So if you eat something that doesn't agree with you, then that may not be the right thing for you. So yes, you're following this great new plant-based solution and you try, let's just say you try sweet potatoes and sweet potatoes give you an upset stomach. Well, then you probably don't wanna try sweet potatoes again. You can still stay on the plant-based solution. It doesn't mean you have to just jump off of it. So you wanna try something else, asparagus or spinach or something different, you know, that's gonna agree with you and then as you're going through and changing those things, baby steps. Those are those are my key words. Start slow, simple baby steps. Because if you do too much at once, you're going to overwhelm yourself, and then you're not going to want to do it. Believe me, I've been there. I've done those things in many different areas of my life. Um, commit to start. Commit to commit to start right um, right now. Okay. I've been searching, I want to do this, then start easing out, you know, start easing a couple things in, a couple things out, whatever it is, but baby steps that I would say, those are your, your key things right there is slow and steady wins the race kind of thing a little bit, <laughs> and then try something else. If it does, if you don't like the taste of something, try something different, especially if it doesn't agree with your body, listen to your body. It's very smart. Um, I didn't always listen right away. That's why it took me a while to get the, couldn't breathe under control, but we've been there. We, we all struggle with things. And so listen to your body and realize that it's smart and it'll tell you, Hey, I didn't like that. Or, Ooh, that tasted really good. Look, look at all the energy I have now. Look at all these things I can get done because of what I've nourished my body with. Mm. That's really important too. And um, I know that um, you deal a lot with stress and everything and that stress is can be a cause for people to put on excess weight and, and whatnot. Um, what types of tips can you give to people to help to reduce their stress? <laughs> Absolutely. So some quick ones, some quick, easy things to reduce your stress that don't really add much time to your day. When you feel that stressful situation, stop in the moment and take a breath. Mm -hmm. Take a nice breath in. There's a couple of different ones. I like to use the box breathing. And that's just you inhale for four seconds, you hold for four seconds, and then you release for four seconds. Uh -huh. And what that does is that allows your heart rate to slow down. 
your brain to catch up and just gives you that, you know, that's what, 12, 12 seconds. <laughs> and so for 12 seconds, just, and it's that intentionalness mm-hmm. of it. So that intentionalness of it can help slow down that stress in the moment. The other, the biggest thing that I see for stress on our bodies that causes us to gain weight um, is that we actually are not getting enough sleep. Mm. <laughs> and that is, that's, that's key because we're running around, we're doing a lot of things and we're, we hear all of these things that, ah, we don't need to sleep. Let me tell you, sleep is one of the best things you can do for your body. One of the best things you can do to reduce stress is to make sure that you're getting a good night's sleep, good quality night's sleep. And yes, you, it may be difficult because you go to sleep and you, you're thinking of different things. So when you lay down, you can take those breaths in, or you can also intentionally, um, I like to put my hand over my heart mm-hmm. and you just breathe nice and slow in for five and out for five. So that's 10 seconds. Um, and you do that for two minutes and you'll realize that that will slow down your heart rate as well and get you in that relaxed state. And then you can get to sleep and getting to sleep getting that good quality sleep. And yes, each of us requires a different amount, anywhere from six to nine hours on average for an adult. Um, But it's that good quality sleep when you get into REM sleep, that's really when your body's actually recharging itself. Your brain is recharging your processes in your body. There's a lot of things that happen when you sleep that if you don't sleep, they don't happen and then can result in excess cortisol levels, which leads to excess weight and all kinds of other things. Um, But so I would say sleep, very important, and making sure that you're like, oh, okay, well, how do I get that sleep? Start, set yourself a bedtime, just like you do for your kids. When you you had young kids, you set yourself a bedtime, you hold to that, you put your electronic devices away at least 30 minutes to an hour before you go to sleep, And then you try and make your room as comforting as possible for sleeping. So um, if you need white noise in the background, that's fine. If you need an eye mask, that's fine as well. But setting those key little steps and and baby steps, if you want to start with one and then start adding the other in, and then you're going to realize you're going to start getting more sleep. You get more sleep. You're going to have more energy. You're going to have less stress. It's going to be a spiral of effect. That's great. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up the sleep topic too, because um, that's something that, you know, is one of my core pillars with working with weight loss. And um, one thing that I had written in a chapter in a, in a book not too long ago, a few years ago, was talking about um, how there are signals that your body gives you that you think that you're hungry, but you might not be hungry. And sleep is one of them where you might feel sleepy and that you're sleepy because, um, or you might feel hungry, but it's not that you're hungry, but because you are actually sleepy because you haven't gotten enough sleep. And I also like the fact that you brought up that you need that six to nine hours because a lot of times people, you know, they're like, okay, I don't get enough sleep, but oftentimes people don't realize that they could get too much sleep. And if they're going over the nine hours then you kind of start dipping down into that, that, um, that threshold for your optimal health as well. And a lot of people don't realize that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's, sleep is, is key. And I've done surveys on it and I've asked um, medical professionals, other professionals, other entrepreneurs. That's the key. You want to get good quality sleep and get enough. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Not definitely. too much. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. All right. So, um, so when you, when you're intertwining the Eastern and the Western medicine, what type of Western, um, is there a particular modality or something of the, the, I keep saying Western, not the Western, the Eastern, is there a particular modality of the Eastern medicine that you use, or is it a combination of different, um, different areas? Great question. Um, it's actually a combination of different areas. Um, I say there's a time and a place for each thing, just like there's a time and a place for Western medicine. So if I fall down and break my arm, I probably want to have some Western medicine. I'm not just gonna rub salve on it because I need to have surgery or something. Um, With the Eastern, there's a time and a place for each thing as well. 
-hmm. So supplementation could be one of those. The thing is, is I want you to optimize whatever you're putting into your mouth pill wise, whether that's Western prescriptions, over the counter medic medication, or that supplementation. I don't want to give you a lot more supplementation to take. I want you to optimize what you're taking and really help you with those other pieces of like lifestyle medicine. So we look at your nutritional component. We look at your movement. We look at practices for um, other practices such as yoga and meditation and Tai Chi and a whole host of different things. Um, I also have other technologies in place that I utilize as well that are pieces that are in that Eastern modality that depend upon if it's right for you, then we'll pull it in or we're not pull it in. It's not a one size fits all. And I think that that's the key is, is each one of us is unique. We have similar characteristics, but knowing that each of us is unique and we can come up with things that are, are beneficial most for you, then that's, then that's the key. And realizing that supplements can interact with other supplements in either a good way or a bad way. And supplements can interact with medications in either a good way or a bad way. So realizing and being conscious of what you're taking and making sure you're not causing more harm to your body is very key as well. Great. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about, um, about what they might should, should be doing, what type of supplements, what are good supplement resources to look for? How can people get in touch with you? Yeah. So the best way is, um, to go to my website, drmelissabalizan.com and, um, you can click on a link and, and, uh, schedule, learn a little bit more that it would and schedule an appointment right away. Or I also have, I don't want to give too many, but I do have a direct link, um, to my calendar. If you know, you want to just talk with me, um, then I have a direct link and all I have to remember is askdrmelissa.net. Great. Wonderful. And you also have um, something for us to help us also get more information about um, your health. So when you explain a little bit about your freebie. Yes, absolutely. So what I have for you all today is um, it's called five health setbacks, five unexpected health setbacks and how to best avoid them. These are things that can happen at the drop of a hat and they're unexpected. And so these are things that it, as you read through this, you can realize and start making those baby steps to change so that you don't become a statistic in one of these particular areas. Um, because, um, and I'll, I'll throw out a statistics right now, just, just for it to impact, um, one out of every five women will die of heart disease. That's scary. Yeah. So let's change that. So in this, this little health setback, but there's some tips and how you can help prevent that from happening and for other things as well. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. So yes. Yeah, so everyone, you received that link to, um, Dr. Balizan's freebie when you got your video and that you're watching, I, you should have that link there. And, um, we also have our Facebook group, the Plant-Based Fat Loss Solution Series. So if you haven't yet joined the Facebook group, make sure you get over there and you'll see a post with the Dr. Bally's on there. And um, if you have any other questions, then you can drop them in the Facebook group for her as well. So Dr. Bally's on, I really appreciate you um, being part of this series and to bring a different perspective with um, letting people know that you need to see your doctor I definitely don't want to give people the misconception or the misperception that doctors are not important. Doctors are very important. You do, there's a place and time for the, the Western medicine. Like you mentioned, if you have a broken arm or broken leg, um, you, if you have something that's an acute condition and uh, before we wrap up really quickly, just do you want to explain a little bit more about the Western side and what people need to know in terms of the differences between acute and chronic conditions and things that they probably want to look toward Western medicine to, to address. Absolutely, Tanya. So when we're talking um, Western medicine and its place, so acute conditions. So those are conditions that happen 
in the moment, immediate, like a broken arm, an emergency room visit. So think of those things. Western medicine is great for emergency care and for those broken arms and things like that. There's also some places. So if you go in and you're diagnosed with a severe condition and you have started implementing some lifestyle changes, but you're not quite there. And the risk of you taking the medication um, is very low compared to the benefit of you taking the medication. Then sometimes it's important to actually start that medication with the, what your physician wants you on to help control that condition of your high blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it happens to be. And know that you're on the route to looking for other solutions. So you're looking for other alternatives such as Eastern modalities. You don't wanna be on that medication forever. You're, you're gonna start it now because if you don't, your risk of dying is hugely high, okay? So that's um, a piece. Now we can get you down to whether you're on Western medication, whether it's that prescription over the counter um, medication, or um, just, you know, you're taking supplements and, and I'm going to lump them together because if you're taking stuff now and you're not sure if it's the right thing for you, then that's something that we can assess. Okay. When we're looking at that Western medicine and, and you're determined that you don't want to be taking that pill forever, then there's a time and a place that we can get you down to maybe it's a maintenance dose, a very, very small dose, because depending upon your condition, we may or may not be able to get you totally off. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain, and I, and I say that because of there's certain things that you may not. A lot of times there's an alternative. So there's an Eastern alternative, whether that's supplementation or whether that's other Eastern modalities as well. But combining those two and realizing that for those acute conditions, it might be beneficial for those chronic conditions, which I'm speaking of. So chronic is long-term. So you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure. You've been diagnosed with diabetes. You've been diagnosed with, I'm going to go, we're going to say depression and anxiety, which actually could be acute or chronic, but often with those latter two, um, you get placed on a medication because you were had a situation where maybe it was an anxiety or depression and now your situation is better and you want to get off those medications and that is absolutely 100 able to do your physician may or may not understand because they just keep re refilling it for you so when you speak up and you realize hey i don't want to be on this medication for my chronic condition anymore i am motivated to change you know, you've got to change different things. So that whole body health, whether it's a mental change, a physical shift, an emotional shift, those things all tie together. And as you're making that, that change, and when you're looking at plant-based solutions, that could be a change as well for your chronic conditions. So I hope that um, yeah. differentiating to the two between acute and chronic and kind of ties in where Eastern and Western can kind of go and help you. Yes, yes. Thank you for, for um, explaining that for people as well. It's good to always um, to have that perspective from uh, a medical professional. And, and that's where, you know, the, the plant-based uh, eating lifestyle can really come into play too with those chronic conditions. I had um, uh, Dr. McDougall on as one of the experts too, and he is um, a pioneer in the plant-based eating industry and has really helped a lot of people with those chronic type of conditions. So it's something as you're watching the series, take a look at all of the interviews and all, what all the experts have to say. And as Dr. Uh, Balizan helps her patients and my goal as well is to empower you with solutions for you, for your condition. You know, I always say that you're not a cookie. You can't have a cookie cutter solution. So thank you, Dr. Balizan, for joining us at the Plant-Based Fat Loss Solution Series. And once again, you can find her at drbalizan.com and make sure you click on her link to stay in touch with her as well and get that information about those, um, those five health setbacks and how to avoid them. Thank you for joining us and I will see you at the next interview. Thanks, Tanya.